Welcome to alto saxophone lesson one. The first thing you need to do when you open your instrument is grab your reed, make sure it is not cracked or chipped, and it goes in your mouth. You need to make sure that your reed is wet in order to create the vibration that is needed to make a sound on your saxophone. So I'm not gonna leave it in my mouth now because I need to talk to you. You grab your saxophone, comes in three pieces, and does not include your neck, uh, brace. You have the neck and the mouthpiece. These go together just like this with the cork. If it's too difficult on to put it on, make sure you put a little bit of cork grease on there uh, that you can get in a kit or it should have come with your uh, saxophone. You need to make sure that the hole here is facing the bottom when you're holding your neck like this. Also, the screws will go on the bottom. This is what it looks like. In order to put your reed on, remember to be in your mouth, lift up the ligature, this is called ligature, you put your reed in there, slide it down, and you go all the way down to where your finger touches the mouthpiece. Make sure that your ligature is loose enough. For example, you can see here there's a gap there, so that's not going to work. If you're, you can see there, you can see the reed, that's not going to work. So you push it down gently because they do break pretty easily. See, there's no gap. There you go. And once it's in the correct position, you use these knobs to tighten it. All right. You can test the sound. In order to play it, <clears throat> you make your lip and shape it this way. I kiss over your teeth. Your top teeth go on top of the mouthpiece. And your lips cover that. Make sure you're not puffing out your cheeks. It's not... Although it may look funny, it's not a proper way to play. Keep your cheeks in. If your is not making a sound, it's a couple of reasons why that would happen. Number one, there's probably a chip or a crack in your reed, or your mouth is too far in. If your mouth is too far in, it makes this sound. Not the great greatest sound in the world. If your mouth is too far out, you're not gonna make a sound. So the best thing you could do is start, make sure it's not too far in, and put it in slowly in order to find where the spot is where it creates the correct vibration. For example, if I pull it out, it goes away. And in order to separate the notes, you're gonna say two as you're playing. Of course, it's in your head. All right, now we're gonna attach this to our saxophone. You may need to wiggle it just a little bit. This tightens your mouth, uh, neck and mouthpiece to your saxophone. Okay, you need to make sure when you put your neck thing on, your saxophone is going to be held to your right side. So you see here, this is not straight, okay? So you need to make sure you turn your mouthpiece so that it's parallel in the correct position to your mouth, okay? All right, and now stand up so you can see. So you need to hold it over to your side here. And the way you place your fingers is in the back, you have a black, usually black spot. This is called a trigger. You will need to use that for some of your notes. I know some of your alto saxes look different. They have four buttons or five buttons. Make sure you use the main button here, second and third, and on the bottom, fourth, fifth, and sixth. It's a little easier to do this one. Your pinky will be used here or here, depending on what note you're going to play. But for now, you can use these three and these three. You notice I'm not pressing this button in the middle. Sometimes they have a button up here. So make sure it's these three buttons here. Your saxophone is to the side. 
The first three notes you're going to be learning on the saxophone are B, C, and D. B is the third line on the treble clef. The way we play B is, this is very similar to recorders, if you remember your recorder class, is just the first button itself, not the trigger. You do not press the trigger in the back, just the first button itself. And this is what B sounds like. Try it yourself. You can pause this video at any time to try something or to master a specific skill. Again, if you, no sound is coming out of your instrument, make sure that your reed is on properly. Make sure it's not cracked or chipped. Make sure your mouth is in the right spot, not too far in, because it makes this sound not cool. Or make sure it's not too far out. It makes absolutely no sound. Right in the middle, remember, put your lip over your teeth, teeth on top of your mouthpiece, and your lip, top lip on top of that. Here, here, here. Look at song number one. You see there, we have a whole note which is worth four beats. Then you have a whole rest which is four beats of silence. We're going to play number one together. Remember, number one just has B. B is only that first button. Again, some of you may have a button up here. It's not that one. It's this one here. All right? Let's play number one together. One, two, three, four. Rest. Two, three, four. Rest. Two, three, four. Rest, two, three, four. Rest, two, three, four. For educational purposes, I am taking my mouth off of the mouthpiece in order to count, but normally you wouldn't do that. You want to make sure you have your mouthpiece in continuously as you are playing. And when you play, you separate the notes by doing the two, two sound. Also, make sure you are not puffing out your cheeks. It's not this. Also, it's important to remember to have your mouth all the way around and that there's no air leaking out of your mouthpiece. So that is the note B. If you look at number two, you're going to learn your second note, which is C. C is the third space from the bottom on the treble clef. In order to play C, this is B, you're going to release that first one and play the second button. Make sure it's not this one, it's this one here. This is C, which is again the third space from the bottom on the treble clef. Listen to C. Also, I need to remind you, you don't take a breath every single note. For example, you don't play this way. Because the chances are you may come back to the note and you may end up on a different part of your mouthpiece and it may sound not so pretty. For example, and make all kinds of weird noises. You don't want to do that. You want to make sure you stay in the right spot for your sound and also keep it there when you are playing your notes. All right, number two, you're going to do the same thing as number one. You're going to play C, which is the middle finger right here. Remember, it's not this one this one here. You're going to play it for four beats, rest for four, play for four, rest for four, play for four, rest for four. Then in song number three, you're going to alternate the notes. Your first note is going to be the B. Then you're going to rest for four, then C. I am going to play song number three for you so you can hear what it sounds like. One, two, three, four. One, two, ready, C. One, two, ready, C. One, two, ready, B. One, two, three, four. Just to remind you, this is B, this is C. The third note you need to learn is D, which is the fourth note from the bottom on the treble clef. D is a little more complicated because you're going to pre press one, two, and three, and the bottom one, two, and three. And here's the cool part. You get to press the trigger. Here you go. 
listen to that. So you're having all the buttons pressed. One, these three down here, these three up here, and the trigger makes D. <laughs> So I want you to practice playing B, C, D. The transition from C to D may be challenging at first, but as you practice it, I'm sure you'll be able to master that skill. So I'm going to play B. I'm going to stand up so you can see my fingering. C, D. Again. Remember, D is these three, these three, and the trigger in the back. So make sure you press them down. All right? I'm really looking forward to you, uh, to hearing you in class. So make sure you're practicing songs number one through number seven, and make sure you're paying attention to your notes. And also the rest values and the note values are very, very important. All right, have lots of fun. We'll see you in class.